Hi guys, Miss Redwoods here again. Um, we're just talking about digital citizenship, following on from our previous lesson. Uh, so what we've got here is a bit of a um, profile for our little digital citizen, and we're going to have a little look into that. Hey, so to start with, uh, we'll have a bit of a recap. Uh, last lesson you might remember that um, we broke digital citizenship down into four aspects. That was uh, digital footprint digital conduct, digital relationships, and also digital well-being. So we're going to be focusing on a bit more of the digital well-being today and then asking some questions at the end. So this lesson will be a little bit different to some in the past. You'll be watching a fair bit of media and then trying to answer some extended questions at the end. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so to start with, uh, the first task, you're going to watch the video uh, that follows this and you're going to complete a quiz attached and if you've done that and you've answered those questions 100% then that means you're working at um, level 3 of the solo levels so that's um, multi-structural and then once you've completed the quiz you come back on and you continue to watch the video Social media can be complicated. Here's some things to think about to help you post smart. Flo Cab, let's go. I might show you where I'm going, but I think before I'm posting, all my pictures have been chosen. I just post whatever. I might show you where I'm going. To post pics and post comments and make your friends say holy smokes like Robin. Your posts live forever, that's a long time. So don't overshare when you go online. Yeah, your digital footprint will stick with you. So stop and think before you post that picture or message. Flow cab, let's go. The top 10 things to think about before you post. One. Ask yourself, would you say it in real life? If the answer's no, don't post it online. And if you wouldn't want it said about you, don't post it about someone else. That's the golden rule Number two Are your posts vain and narcissistic About your perfect life All designed to elicit Jealousy and envy in the people who read it If so, don't post that brag Delete it Number three That's TMI, folks I have a rash Well, I didn't want to know Number four Are you posting every detail of your life? Who in their right mind is going to find that nice? Woke up, hashtag bagel, hashtag shower And 20 more posts in the next half hour Think about the reader when you're sharing Edit your posting, your friends who keep caring Number five A bit like four, here's what else Keep your relationship details to yourself You don't need to post every hug and sunset That might make your single friends feel upset A moment still has me if you don't post it, know this Now let me get back and focus number six The cryptic cliffhanger man like Dude, no one understands It's a little desperate Begging for attention Just be a front off the bat with what you mentioned Number seven Are your posts all complaining? You really need pity just because it's raining Number eight Curate your photos like a museum Don't post pics you wouldn't want your grandma seeing Goes double for anything risky or risque That could affect your future in a big way and that's doubly, doubly true if it's a photo of a friend and not just you. Number nine. Check your privacy settings. I mean it want creeps of future employers to read it. You really want your Insta face tweets like concrete? I mean all over the streets. Number ten. Post smart, okay? And spread love. That's the Brooklyn way. I show you where I'm going, but I think before I'm posting, all my pictures have been chosen. All right, guys, so after you finish that uh, first video there and finish the quiz, then we're going to move on to our next task. 
Okay, so checking out um, our profile here. We move down to work experience. Uh, we can see that um, our little uh, digital uh, person, she's worked at McDonald's, Rebel Sport, Mad Butcher for half a day. And uh, of course, it'll only be half a day. Bloke's mad. Um, and currently with Hurricanes. Now, what you guys have to do for your work experience is, you can see down here, I've got one, two, three, four. Little pointer out. One, two, three, and four. And what I'm going to get you guys to do is follow that. So, just on a piece of paper or on the uh, device you've got in front of you, write down three IT, IT rules that you have at home. If you've got none, you can write none, that's cool. Uh, then you're going to go to the IT corner of the room and wait there until another student arrives. So if you have a look around now, in one corner of the room, there should be a piece of paper that says IT corner. You're going to go over there, wait till another student arrives, you're going to have a quick chat to them, find out what rules they have at their house. Moving on to number three, find those rules and record them. They're obviously going to do the same for you. Once you've done that, you move on to step four, which is you're going to write two pros and two cons for each rule that they've shared with you. If they said that they had no rules at home, then you write four pros and four cons for having no rules at home in relation to IT in particular. Okay, so let's not forget that. Talking about rules about devices, computers, um, things like that. Cool. And then once you've done that, you're going to come back and you're going to watch the rest of the video. So you can pause it now. All right, guys, so now that you're back, um, we're going to move on. We're going to look at those rules that you might have just discussed and your pros and cons that you've written down. Um, why do we need those rules? Uh, well, I've written here that we need those rules regarding IT at home so we can manage our time using devices effectively. Uh, that's really important, I believe, because it can directly affect our whole aura. So inappropriate use can lead to negative effects on our aurora. Things like sleep issues, so the light that's emitted from devices, um, that actually suppresses our want to sleep. So if you're using devices, you'll find that you don't necessarily need to sleep um, and it can keep you up a lot later. Um, health problems, so if we're sitting incorrectly, um, if we're using them too much, they can affect our eyes. And obviously, if we're not outside running around, then we're going to have health issues like that as well. Now, I've got here an inability to socialize. That's because if we're always on our devices, we're losing that human-to-human -human contact, maybe losing our ability to chat to other people. Monetary issues. Obviously, the internet, although it seems free, it costs money. So somebody's paying for you to use it, all right? So if we're using a lot and we're downloading a lot of stuff, that could be costing a lot of money. Um, and then... Obviously, if we're on our devices using them inappropriately, spending money on games, that could also cost us. The last one I've got is educational problems. If we're using them inappropriately and we're not focusing on the things that we need to focus on, getting our schoolwork done, things like that, we're playing games, then that could lead to issues with our education. So that's why we need some rules at home. Okay, we're going to move on now. So the next section um, of today's lesson we're going to be watching a few different clips. So the next sort of uh, little bit will be three different clips. And then you're going to move on to two questions at the end. One relational question, one extended abstract. So the first clip that follows this, um, as you can see, this is the little section uh, on the profile page. That shows where our little digital person, where she lives. Um, and you're going to watch the clip that follows in regards to geotagging and the fact that any photo that you post, the location can be found. Social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter allow us to post pictures and share information online, but you have to be real careful because you might be revealing more than you think. WDSU reporter Simi Chewin shows us some of the potential dangers and how you can protect yourself. Smile. One, two, three. Catherine Vo loves snapping pictures of her three-year-old daughter, Abby. Good job. It's a way for her to keep track of all of Abby's special moments. And by posting those pictures to social networking sites like Facebook, she can share those milestones with all of her loved ones. You know, we have family in Chicago and New York and, and in Houston, and I have 
friends who have moved away for work. So it definitely keeps us closer and keeps us a part of each other's lives. But unfortunately, all that posting comes with potential dangers that can't be seen. That metadata, which is hidden, is, is out there. So anyone can then pull that picture off of the computer, put it in some type of mapping software, Google Earth, anywhere. And, um, and get the location right off the bat. It's called a geotag. It's embedded in photos and videos taken with GPS equipped smartphones these days and can pinpoint your exact location by providing the longitude and the latitude of where the photo was taken. Special Agent Timothy Marsh with the I'm FBI sure, says yeah. the concern is because you can't see it, you may not realize it's there and you could be putting yourself at risk when posting geotag pictures online. For instance, see how often you attend that park and see what times you attend that park and actually really just stock out, really centralize on that location. For predators, it can serve as a road map to where you are. Criminals can also track your every move. So they know that you're not home, so that home could be robbed, they could be sitting there waiting for you to come home. There are several issues you need to really think about. It doesn't take a computer genius to figure it out. That's why Marsh urges people to be extremely aware of what you're posting and disabling the geotag feature if you need to. That's what Vo says she's going to do from now on. It's not necessarily uh, important to just stop posting pictures because the whole point in social media is to interact with family or friends for that purpose. So definitely learning and being more aware of learning how to disable these features and that it is out there. So these memories won't wind up in the wrong hands. On your side of New Orleans, Simni Chuan, WDSU News. To learn how to disable the geotagging feature on your phone, just go to WDSU.com, click the As Seen on WDSU section. You can also see geotagged photos posted on Twitter and find out how easily someone can access your information. All right, guys, so you just watched that. Uh, you would have noticed it's quite interesting that uh, you know any photo that you post online, the information from your phone, the GPS stats are put with that photo, and that anyone can use that to trace where you are. So a lot of dangers involved in that. People will know where you are, where you like to hang out. I mean, they might even know when you posted that you're not at home, and they could go around and steal stuff. All right, we're going to move on. <clears throat> oh, so this is just the interests of our little digital person. Pretty interesting. All right, so the reason I've just stopped on the photos section um, is because we're going to move on to a video regarding sharing photos and images and what can happen with those. So how we can manage that appropriately. Uh, all of us like taking photos and throwing them up there for everyone to see, but we really need to focus on what ones we're, fo we're sharing and with who. So, see, here we go here, sharing our pics. Follow, uh, watch the uh, the clip that follows, and hopefully we'll get a bit of an idea of what could go wrong if we're sharing our clips, you know, images inappropriately. I heard it was too Check this out. Hold up, Whoa! Oh, man. Yo, send that to me. Come on, send that to me.
All right, guys, so that's two out of three clips there. So we're building a little bit of a um, information base for today. Um, and we're going to watch one more. You'll see here I've got on the left on our little person's, digital person's uh, profile, their update. Yo, peeps, I'm working towards relational. All right, the reason it says that is because if you can answer these two short answer questions well, that means you are working towards that relational uh, part of solo. So that means you're taking the ideas that we've discussed last spell, the ideas that you've looked at in the clips, and you're putting them together to form your own ideas. All right. So watch the, the clip that follows. Uh, and then what I want you to do is pause it using your workbook. Answer the two questions here, just short answer questions. They can be a couple of sentences. How would you define cyberbullying? So that doesn't mean look that up. That means you define it yourself. And then secondly, what law should cover internet use and why? That question is a little bit more in-depth. So that could be, what do you think? Do you think it should be uh, the law of the country that you're in? Should there be an international law? Should there be internet law just by itself? And then obviously validate why. If you can come up with another reason or another type of law, that would be quite interesting. There is an update tonight on the story of Retea Parsons. She's the Nova Scotia teenager who died after being relentlessly bullied and humiliated online. Her story struck a chord across this country. There were calls to find some way to stop the tormentors. Now Nova Scotia has. Its new Cyber Security Act goes into effect today. As Shirley Engel reports, it won't stop all the bullies, but it may make them think twice. It took someone to die for this to be taken seriously. A family's anguish leads to change. Four months since Glenn Canning's daughter, Retea Parsons, took her life after being tormented online, Nova Scotia introduces legislation to give victims a way to fight back. The ability to seek a protection order from the court, identify their cyber bullies, sue for damages, and if they're minors, parents could be on the hook. It's going to be hopefully something that's going to protect our kids uh, and uh, allow police officers to be able to, uh, you know, do their jobs a lot better. It's become a national issue. A series of high-profile teen suicides forced provinces to strengthen anti-bullying strategies. Ontario, B.C. and Alberta among those that have also passed laws. But Nova Scotia now leads the pack, says this expert. It's made uh, bullying uh, a specific tort, just like uh, assault would be or a battery would be. Ottawa recently pledged cash for it's bullying prevention programs well. across the country by teens for teens. To educate children, talk about it at home, talk about it at school councils, talk about it at schools. And the federal justice minister says he's considering new cyberbullying offences in the criminal code. And they would be in the area of non-consensual distribution of intimate images or words and therefore allowing criminal sanctions to attach to the issue of cyberbullying. Retea's father is skeptical his daughter's life could have been saved if Nova Scotia's law had been in place. The proof, he says, will be when the first cyberbully is outed and punished with jail time. It's going to take fear to put it into some people that, man, you are not hiding behind an IP address or behind a keyboard and doing this stuff. It's this disgusting. You know, you would never do those things if you thought for a second everyone was going to know you did it. Hoping the court of public opinion alone may be enough to punish online bullies. Shirley Engel, Global News, Ottawa. Okay, guys, so if you have finished that, then you're going to want to move on. You'll be down here, right at the top of the list, extended abstract. That's getting us to level five. That's getting us to the top. We're thinking outside the box. Um, I've written here where, this, where our digital citizens have shared a link. Why, why, why? Um, and I think that's a really good way for us to think about our extended abstract. And the question is, young people should have to get an internet license before they can use it, just like they do when they're driving. Do you agree or disagree? So answer that in your workbooks. And remember, why, why, why? So don't just answer why once, then think why again and why. Cool, guys. All right. I will speak to you later on. Enjoy that. And stay classy. Herotonga.